Welcome back to Dezavi Productions. My name is Dezavi. Today, we're doing part two of how to make a beat inside of Pro Tools. We'll be covering how to extend your MIDI clip, how to separate the sounds on your drum rack, and how to convert your MIDI into audio. If you missed the first part, click on the info card in the top corner. Now, we're gonna have to do a part three. It's just a lot of information to cover. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss the video. Without further ado, let's get to it. All right guys, so in part one, we left off by creating these four bar loops of these MIDI clips. And there's one thing I forgot to add to the drums, which is a crash. So really quickly, I just added that in there. Let's take a listen. So it's a crash at the beginning of the clip, nothing crazy. Now, before we move forward, I want you to understand that everybody's process of arranging and making a beat is different. Some people like to arrange in MIDI, others like to arrange in audio, and to be honest, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. It's just your preference and what you want. Me personally, I like to extend the MIDI clips as far as the length of the track goes, then convert them into audio, and then start picking apart the tracks. Because if I duplicate all these MIDI clips and convert it into audio, then at the end and beginning of every MIDI clip or audio clip, the audio is going to pop or click because the audio ends and starts abruptly. Unless you actually sit and record every single track individually, you're going to get these pops and clicks. So for you to understand what I'm trying to say here, I'm going to go to track, go to new, I'm going to just show you real quick a demonstration. I'm going to go to stereo, hit create. And this is especially essential when you're working with um, instruments such as the piano pad, the choir, and the bass. These are long length audios. So I'm going to just use the piano pad as an example. I'm going to click and drag this down into the audio. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to solo my voice and the track here. So let's say you're, you're arranging your beat, right? And you're duplicating, you're duplicating all these clips. But in between these two clips where one ends and the other starts, you're going to get a popper click because the audio ends and starts abruptly. So to avoid that from happening, I like to extend the MIDI clip as far as it goes, especially when it's a track like this. And I'll convert it into audio, then I'll start picking apart the track, and then I'll use fades, ins and outs to help with that cut. So I'm going to simply delete this. Delete. And unsolo this. Alright, so to extend the MIDI clips, what we're going to do is use the trim tool. And I'm going to go to the end of the clip that I want to extend, and I'm going to basically pull it out. So I'm going to go to about 25 bars. I'm going to just keep it something nice and short. Next, we're going to go to the drums. I'm going to extend this. As you can tell, it did not happen. So we're going to double click in here, use the selector tool, highlight the four bars, and use Command D to duplicate. And I'm going to go all the way to 25 here on the ruler. So that's 25. And next, we're going to go to the choir, the bass. And now we have a certain length to the tracks. So what I'm aiming for here is for every instrument to be on its own track. And now in the drums, we have the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, and the crash all on the same track. So we have to separate those before we move forward. So to do that, I'm going to right click here and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make three duplicates. Now the original drums, I'm going to rename kick. The first duplicate, I'm going to call snare. The next one, hi-hat. The next, crash. I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to go to into every individual clip. And let's say for the kick, I'm going to delete anything that is not the kick. Next, we're going to go to the snare and delete everything that is not the snare. Same with the hi-hat. And finally, the crash. So let's go ahead and play that. Okay, so everything seems to be in good order. So now what we're going to do is we are going to create audio tracks to match the MIDI tracks. So by that, I mean stereo with stereo, mono with mono. So I'm going to move the choir down here because it's the only mono track so i'm going to make one two three four five six stereo tracks so six stereo and i'm going to go ahead and hit create 
Oh crap, I made one. Okay, so uh, basically to shortcut this, we can just double click down here and it'll create some more audio tracks that are stereo. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna need one more. So I'm gonna zoom out here so you can see all the tracks. So the first one we're going to call Piano Pad Audio because if we just leave it as Piano Pad, Pro Tools is gonna be like, well, there's already one called Piano Pad. So I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna call this Kick Audio, Snare, Audio, next, hi hat, audio, then crash, audio, then bass, audio, and now we're going to go to track again, new, mono, and we're going to call this choir, and we're going to move this all the way down to the bottom. And now we're ready to convert these clips into audio. So we're going to simply click and drag the MIDI clip into its corresponding audio track. So the piano pad is gonna go on the piano pad. Even though you cannot see it, it's actually in here. So all you're going to do is simply release. Next, we're gonna move on to the kick, drag it down, the snare, the hi-hat, the crash, the bass, and the choir. All right, so now that we have everything converted, I'm going to click and select all the MIDI clips, and I'm going to right-click here on the names, and I'm gonna go to hide and make inactive. So let's go ahead and play this to make sure that everything is in proper order. So because, sorry about that. So because we extended all the MIDI clips, if we go to the end of the four bar loop here on the piano pad, you're gonna hear that there is no proper click. And that is exactly the reason why we extended the MIDI clips and then converted it into audio. So especially if this is gonna be one of your main leads for your track, there's gonna be a lot less um, fading in and out because you're gonna be using pretty much the length of the audio itself. So we're gonna end part two here and do the arrangement, effects, edit, mix, master, and finally bouncing out in part three. Thank you for watching. In part three, we'll cover how to make an arrangement, edit, mix, master, and finally bounce your beat. Subscribe and comment below what you think I should cover next. I'll see you at the next session.